Hey YouTubers, you're probably planning a trip to Arequipa or you're some of my lovely friends and family and you're watching me for this. Uh, thank you for watching me in any case. Uh, Arequipa, interesting, it's a big city, has a lot to offer. First off, going to talk about a nunnery that was there. Sounds incredibly boring. And when you see pictures of this, you're going to think, oh my god, Kevin, you just blew all the filters and edited all these photos. These photos are not edited. Um, I did a little tweaking on a couple of them to actually take them down a little bit um, because the inside of this nunnery was bright. Uh, interesting thing was, is for hundreds of years they were cut off from the outside world, no contact really at all. Then in 1970 they finally collapsed and called it good. There's still some nuns there operating but mostly it's a museum of old stuff and interesting things. We are in a nunnery and this, well a monastery. Uh, this place was cut off from the outside world completely from 1579 until 1970. Mm. Long time. It is pretty much a prison for nuns. This was the only outside contact to the world that they were allowed to talk through these bars. My question is if they were cut off from the outside world, how did they breed? If they didn't breed, new nuns would come in. The nuns. New nuns would come. There's a museum for Juanita. Juanita is a uh, mummy, a very, very well-preserved mummy. She was sacrificed uh, by the Incans, and when she was born, she knew she was going to be sacrificed to the gods, and she was sacrificed when she was a teenager. Interesting story. Uh, was planning on skipping it, didn't, and was glad I didn't. Uh, next, uh, as far as restaurants, stay away from all the restaurants around the square. They're all garbage. They're rubbish. Um, we went to a number of them, and I would say they're mediocre at best. Um, also, there was one place I would send you to, Le Petit Francais. Uh, it is a cute little coffee shop that has really good service and good crepes. One thing that impressed me is we went there one day. The next day, they remembered us, and when we walked in, the lady who served us the day before welcomed us back, which is great in such a touristy place. I ordered a cappuccino, and she looked to my wife and asked if she wanted her latte, which is what she had the day before. Remembering our faces and what we drank after just one time going in, great. They did an excellent job. Good crepes, both sweet and savory, but I won't go on too far about it. I'll put some information down below for you on it. Uh, there is also a famous viewpoint in Arequipa. Stay away from it. I have a picture, you can see it right here. Arequipa is not a particularly great looking town. You do get a view of the mountain, but you can get that from a lot of places in Arequipa. Not worth the walk, wouldn't suggest it. Um, next, if you, people go to Arequipa usually because they're going to do a trek, there's two different canyons. There's the Coca Canyon and the Cotahousi Canyon. Uh, Coca Canyon is very touristy. It's where 95, I'm sure, percent of the people go. Um, lots of infrastructure is made for tourists. Uh, that being said, if you want to get away from the Gringo Trail and get away from the tourists, definitely go to Cotahousi. Uh, Cotahousi, it should be noted though, does not have the same infrastructure for tourists. Buses come half hour late, half hour early. Uh, there's 
not the same amount of hostels or restaurants. People don't speak English. Literally, nobody speaks English. Uh, we got along just fine, loved it, had a great time there, would put it on our suggestion list, but with those caveats, you have to be self-sufficient if you're going to be going there. Uh, also, don't go with high expectations of service for people. Everybody was very nice, but it's not a tourist location. It is three in the morning and we have arrived to Kotahousi and we are hoping there is a taxi. We are in a local bus. I don't know how we found our way, I guess. Um, going to get to the trailhead, so to say, to see the falls. And, uh, <coughs> Look at this bus. If we fall into the canyon, we are nice and bummer. <laughs> Um, so we're in Kotahousi right now, and I haven't seen any other tourists. We, we think some people may be tourists, but they're uh, from around the area tourists. Okay, well, we will show you guys where we're gonna arrive, and we don't really know yet how we're gonna get back. We might have to walk back or hitchhike back. Who knows? We are at the Sipia Falls in the Cotahousi Canyon. Um, Cotahousi Canyon makes the Grand Canyon looks like the Petit Canyon. Uh, parts of the Cotahousi Canyon are twice as deep as the Grand Canyon. It makes it the deepest canyon in the world. to see our border crossing and maybe Mai will share some of her frustrations with you on that and help you guys learn some things. Uh, see you all in Bolivia. Thank you. 